I have a new obsession and it is cut crystal. I have just been so like attracted to this lately. I feel like it looks so elevated, so luxurious. And here's a little secret for you. You can find it at a very, very affordable price. I got a set of these. You can see it still has the sticker on it from Home Goods, a set of six for about $14, super, super affordable. That's probably about what I paid for this simple everyday glass here. And look how much more luxurious this cut crystal glass one looks in comparison. It's such a no brainer. And in addition to finding it at places like Home Goods and Marshalls and TJ Maxx and places like that, you can find a ton of this stuff at the thrift store for like pennies on the dollar and it's beautiful. You can find candy dishes and bases and platters and all of that cut crystal, just beautiful, very high end looking, very luxurious at thrift store prices. You cannot beat that. Also, I have bought a couple of pieces off of Amazon, like a bedside craft that was cut crystal that I am absolutely loving. And I found that on Amazon for affordable price. So I don't know if you're with me. You'll have to let me know if you love the cut crystal too. If you think that that is just such a more elevated and nicer look than this, redonate this to the thrift store or keep it for like those occasions when you're not feeling quite as fancy and get this for a more elevated and luxurious look. I think you're gonna love it. This is just one of the many ideas that I'm sharing with you today on how to elevate your home and make it look more expensive. So let's get right into our next one, which is something that I have sworn like over and over and over again. I would never do, but it's because the value of it is so good and it just works. That is learning how to slip cover your furniture. Sewing is just such a good skill to have in your back pocket when it comes to home decor because you can really save a ton of money and elevate your home. And it's not as hard as you think it would be to do. So I've done a couple of small slip covering and upholstery projects here on the channel. But before I started actively doing YouTube, I reupholstered several sofas and love seats and every time I'd be like never again <laughs> um, and then I would do it again because it it is just so effective so you have a tired looking sofa you you hate the fabric it's worn out it's it's just not attractive it's just not really doing anything for your home. And something that you can do is create a slip cover or reupholster these pieces. You can also have it done at an upholster, but I will tell you if you can learn how to do some basic sewing, slip covering your own furniture will save you a fortune, an absolute fortune. So you'll have to let me know in the comment section below if you want me to go back on my swearing off of doing an upholstery project and do like kind of a bigger upholstery project sometime in the future. If that's something you want to see me do and teach you how to do, let me know in the comment section below. It will take you about a week or so to reupholster a sofa if you're an experienced seamstress. And that's for a major project, but you can start with something small. Recover your dining room seats. That could be a whole point in and of itself or a small chair. Start small, build the skills, and then build into to something big like a sofa. And that's what I'm always talking about on my channel is line upon line, precept upon precept. Like little by little, you're gonna gain the skills and the confidence to, to do that. Recovering your furniture will elevate your home, make it feel more expensive and just nicer. I hope you give it a go, get brave, just do it. <laughs> Now, while we're on the topic of repurposing and upcycling things, we do a lot of that on this channel. We go and do our thrift flips. We have taken like kind of a beat up china cabinet, given it new life, painted it on the inside and out. We've even repurposed things like an exterior pillar, cutting it into some very large scale candlesticks that 
kind of emulate something you would see in a higher end design store and they're all very very affordable prices in a recent episode we took like a crafting cart that I had in my craft room and made a top for it and turned it into a grill cart with some hooks and some handles and things like that so if you can just think outside of the box repurpose upcycle and elevate you can even do pieces that are existing in your own home that are tired and just need a little love with a little bit of elbow grease a little creativity maybe some paint or something like that and you can elevate those pieces that you already own even or th items that you have found in a thrift store Facebook Marketplace, all of those. And all of those are very, very budget friendly. One thing about my home when I bought it is all of the lighting was very builder grade. So I went about replacing them one by one. It's amazing what you can find on Amazon, even at the Home Depot, affordable light fixtures that really elevate your space. I've even made over existing light. My first dining room one, I did end up ultimately switching it out, but I still gave the original one a mini makeover to elevate it in the meantime, but then I ended up going with a whole new color palette. And so I just decided to replace it. I've even made over a bathroom light fixture in my home, gave it new life. But you can do this one by one or you can make over your existing stuff and elevate it, make it look more expensive. And you can do that for more affordable prices than you might think. Another suggestion I have to elevate your home is switch out some of your window treatments. Maybe you have some that are from the 1990s and are looking a little bit tired. Switching those out for something a little bit more elevated can be more cost effective than you might think. I found beautiful treatments at home goods Ikea and on Amazon and in very nice materials such as linens and velvets and just really elevated things. I've talked about this in other episodes, trying to make the window treatments and treating them as a larger fixture item where I suggest doing something a little bit more subdued so that you don't get tired of a busy pattern quicker. I've learned this the hard way. So I would just suggest going with something a little bit more refined, a little bit more elegant. I even switched out some blinds recently in my bathroom to some Roman shades and it was just such a nicer look and it didn't cost very much at all. So take a look at your window treatments, the ones that might be bringing down your look a little bit and look for something a little bit more elevated and you don't have to break the bank to do it. When making your home look more expensive, I want you to ask yourself this question on everyday items. Is there a way that I can elevate the look of this to look a little bit nicer? For example, a soap pump, right? A lot of times it would be simple to just put a dial soap out and just pump, pump, pump it right out of the bottle. But switching it out into a nicer pump will just elevate the look of your home. And it's in the simple details sometimes where you can really do some elevating. Soap pumps you can find very affordably at Ikea and Amazon and Home Goods. Again, all of those same stores, you can really find nice looks for an affordable price and you can reuse it over and over and over again. So it's a good investment and it really elevates the look of your home. So look at the things that you are using on a daily basis and ask yourself, is there a way that I can elevate this, make it feel like a little thought has gone into it and all of those small additions will really elevate the look of your home and that's what we're going for. Okay, this next one, I am going to say that I am guilty of this on and off. <laughs> and that is really paying attention to the curb appeal of your home to make it look more expensive. Sometimes we get busy and we don't spend the time outside to elevate our homes and that's switching out the mulch, making sure there's not weeds everywhere, that garbage gets picked up, that gets dropped or blown around in your yard and just really giving the exterior of your home a little bit of love too. Like I said, it kind of goes through ebbs and flows. We get busy, you know, I have kids and it just feels hard. 
<laughs> but we cheapen the look of our home by not giving our exterior even a little love. Maybe that's just as simple as switching out and putting a fresh doormat down and that will make it feel a little bit more loved and thought out and a little bit more expensive. Might be repainting a front door. It might be <laughs> replacing your dead plants that you've killed. I'm not guilty of this at all. <laughs> just kidding. I am the worst uh, keeping things in a pot alive. I I've talked about that heavily on my channel, but just give your exterior a little extra love and your home will thank you for it and it will feel a little bit more expensive. Even if you are in a very tiny little starter home, just a little extra love will elevate the look of it and it will feel more homey. And so that's a little reminder to myself. I need to go out and when I'm done here and work on it myself. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that gives you a little nudge that you need. So do your cabinets need a little bit of love? Are they pulling down the look of your home? Well, I have done several projects on this channel and they vary in degree of difficulties. It could be something as simple as painting or adding a little decorative trim or embellishment to the doors. It could be as elaborate as building a cabinet door, which I just did a cabinet hack to make it as simple as possible and attainable for everyone. And I'll link that below. Or it could even be as simple as just doing a deep, deep clean on your cabinets, which I've done in my kitchen. My cabinets were looking so tired, drab, dirty, and just, oh, I was like, they need painted. But I did a very thorough cleaning and it made them look brand new again. And so I'll link that video as well, but just take a look at your cabinetry, see what you can do with it, whether that is putting on a new coat of polyurethane or painting it or adding trim or refacing your cabinet cabinetry, there is a way to elevate your home, make it look more expensive, and that can vary in degrees depending on what you have going on. I would suggest maybe consider looking at what you can do to elevate your countertops. And that could mean ripping them out and putting in something as nice as a stone or a quartz or a granite type finish on them, if that makes sense for your budget and what you have going on in your life. Or maybe it's even finding some of the more affordable options that have really improved over time. Several years ago, prior to doing YouTube, I had a little townhouse. And while it would have been nice to put in a, a granite countertop, it wasn't in our budget at the time. And I wanted to elevate my home and make it look more expensive. So what I did is I took some Carrera marble looking for mica, right? They've really improved the look of it. And I did kind of a square edge that folded over the top. It didn't have the seam, but it just kind of rolled over that squared edge, did it without the backsplash and put that in. And then I put in a tiled backsplash and it looked so much better, of course, than I did new cabinet door fronts and painted and things like that. But look at the neighborhood that you're in. Also take into consideration your budget, your funds. Don't go into debt for things like this. Save up for it in advance and find the best deal you can. And then sometimes you just live with what you've got. For example, in my kitchen, I've got some Venetian gold granite. It is not exactly what I would have picked out, but I ended up finding a backsplash that I loved and put that in and it really elevated the look of the Venetian granite. And don't get me wrong, the Venetian granite is nice. It's beautiful. It's just not what I personally love, but it's a nice finish and so I worked with it. So take a look at your situation, elevate what works for you and your budget, whether that's getting more of an elevated Formica type product or going with a stone type finish, just work within your budget. Now I do have to throw in one caveat and that's because I get asked about this a lot. <laughs> but I have painted countertops in the past. There's an ancient, ancient video on this channel. I don't know if it's active or not, <laughs> but what I will tell you 
is this stuff is a temporary fix. I do not endorse any painted countertop finishes. They will not stand the test of time. They do not hold up. They might buy you a little extra time, maybe a year or two, but before you know it, they look terrible. And so I do not recommend painting your countertops. Now, having said that, I have not tried the new epoxy ones. Maybe it's something that I would consider, but um, since I have been asked that and we're talking about countertops, I just thought I would give my two cents on that. Avoid the painting unless you know for a fact that it's just a temporary fix. That's my two cents. <laughs> Take that for what it's worth. The next thing to make your home look more expensive is to maybe replace some of your outdated flooring. Now this may seem like an obvious thing, but you would be surprised. And then I also want you to keep in mind what makes sense for your neighborhood, what makes sense for your budget, because you don't want to go overboard, especially if it's, if it's a home that you do not plan on living in the rest of your life. Maybe putting Italian marble in your starter home, something very bougie and expensive does not make sense, but maybe finding a very nice laminate hardwood floor does make sense and it would elevate the look of your home. So just take into consideration maybe the, the price range of your home when you're selecting those finishes. Select something that's appropriate or if you can find like a heck of a deal on something, I'm all for going to that. I just don't want you to go blow a whole bunch of money on something that you won't ever get back. Now, if this is your forever home, you're gonna live in it forever, get what you want <laughs> and enjoy it and love it. I have made a video, it's not like a highly viewed video on how to go about a selecting appropriate flooring for your home. Um, I'll link that below if you're interested in that. And then it, if it's something that you also want me to continue to expand upon let me know the, the overall thing is pick things that look timeless that are not trendy and when you invest in it you will have very little regret and I hope that helps you when you are making that very big purchase well I hope you enjoyed this episode of ideas helping you to elevate your home and make it look more expensive if so here's 10 more ideas right here and to all of my DIY goddesses out there you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.